Hello everyone and welcome back to WSO2 API Manager series. So this video is going to be conceptual with respect to the licensing model supported by WSO2. I'm making this video to provide a brief understanding of the product procurement and usage in the right way. I do welcome your valuable feedback and suggestions. So let's begin the, the session. So here is the quick agenda for today's session. We'll see uh, a quick overview of our of an open source software. Uh, we'll see the WSO2 offerings, open source versus supported open source, license and their different types, and WSO2 license options and the community support. So what is an open source software? So, so the open source software typically is called as an open source whose source code is made available to the general public, typically used by the developers. Uh, they can download the code, they can modify the code and they can use uh, and even can distribute the same to anyone. There are the following characteristics of the open source software. If you talk about the source code access, then users, typically the developers have the access to the source code. And uh, if you talk about the distribution rights, user can uh, modify the source code without any uh, written agreement or any term. Okay, so they can they are uh, free to uh, redistribute uh, the software. They can modify the software as well, and uh, they can make uh, the necessary changes as per their requirement. Uh, there is no discrimination bit against any specific person or the group of the people. If you talk about the restriction and the field of use, so there are uh, literally no uh, restrictions of how the software can be used. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, the license prevention. So any modifications to the, to the open source software must also be released uh, under the same open source license. So that means if we have uh, released some uh, the open source software and we are going to modify, so it should be on the same uh, license it should be released. Typically it's in the Apache GPL version 2.0. So let's understand the analogy uh, of the open source uh, software and how uh, the supported open source software uh, are available in the market. So consider a scenario where uh, you are on a uh, on a trip or you are on uh, a vacation. You have gone to somewhere in the hills, and uh, you are literally thirsty, and uh, you need some uh, water to drink. You went, uh, you found a river, and uh, okay, so you found a river. You take the water and uh, you drink the same, and now you are fine. Okay, that's the, the river is absolutely free of charge to everybody. Anybody can use the water of that particular river. They can drink the water, but at their own risk. Nobody takes the guarantee that if you drink the water, then you are you would be fine or it would take you to harm to the any other level. Okay, the next version would be like you will have a open source software or the open source version of the same, but it is supported by someone. So let's say there is a company uh, who basically collects the water and uh, ensures through different lab testing and all other things to verify that the, that the water that is going to be drank by a person should not make a harm or it should be uh, it should be fine to anybody. Okay, so that builds a trust of uh, that open source water in a bottle. Okay. So that's the uh, simple analogy to explain the how the open source uh, product or the supported open source works actually. So the similar thing happens with the software world as well. So you go to the source code, you download the source code typically through any of the GitHub repositories uh, of that software available or any of the Git repository you find, you make the modifications, but the original manufacturer of the software can only take the guarantee that you are going to use the software in the right way. But if you download, if you are making the changes at your own, then you are solely responsible if something goes wrong. Okay. So next we'll see uh, how WSO2 offers uh, the availability of its softwares. So WSO2 provides a fully software uh, in a middleware space, typically in API management, integration and IAM space. It provides the following options to use the software, the open source. So WSO2 releases its software available in the official GitHub repository, github.com slash WSO2. 
you can visit and you can download the software you can build the package and you can run the software this is called the open source version of that particular software next supported or a license software so wos2 basically uh, releases the software that is verified by wos2 itself and uh, they ensures that there are no vulnerabilities or the security uh, breaches are there in their in, in the source code available on their official website so you can download the same through wos2.com or if you have a containerized deployment you can download the docker images from docker.wos2.com but this is for the commercial use and non commercial use for the evaluation and the learning purpose via the corporate email only so you have to provide your a valid corporate email address for non commercial evaluation or the commercial purpose okay so next is the subscription based so whenever it comes to the subscription then this is something it is going to be on a saas model typically so wos2 has rolled out a uh, there are a lot of products in the integration api management and uh, identity and access management space so we have corio we have asgardio uh, these are the saas based platforms where we can uh, build the proxies create the integrations and even uh, perform the identity and uh, access management integration with our system okay so what does a license mean to an uh, to a user basically so in simple words license gives an authority to use the product or the software and that means a legal compliance so following are the typical types of the licenses are used in the software world it should be it could be a key based it could be a trust based or it could be a subscription based so key based mean whenever you are going to install the software you need to provide a license key and a license key has a particular validity and after the expiration of that license the usage of the software gets restricted a typical example would be microsoft office suite where you provide a license key and you are good to use that software okay and once the uh, the it has the license has got expired the features got limited like it some of the the ms office suite products opens in a read only mode okay next is the trust based like there is a written agreement between the supplier and the user okay there is no license required to enter manually and uh, then uh, you are going to use the software and the validation can happen only via the manual way that the auditing comes and verify that the software is used as per the terms and conditions so typically it is based upon the uh the cpu cores and uh, it, if it is a core based license or it, it is a named user license and the number of users that are in your the user store so these are the typical scenarios next is a subscription based it is typically used for the cloud based offerings uh, the typical example would be pay as you go model so you buy a subscription for a certain extent and uh, based upon your usage you would, you would be charged actually so how wos2 facilitates uh, different licensing options it gives a fully open source license that the source code is available on the github repo and it's available under apache license version 2.0 so you can download and build the pack and you are free to use there is no charge required by wos2 for this the product support license so so the support license is typically required for the product support so you can download and install the software and ready to use but the product support requires uh, it is typically required when you are you are going for a production build or you need a security patches and any upgrades uh, you would like to do so that time you need a product support license so support license is typically classified uh, on a high level it's in the two categories it's a cpu or core based uh, license or the volume based license so this example i have taken from the api manager product for other products it may vary so for cpu core based license that you there are cpu cores defined that for example you can run us you have uh, procured a four core license of api manager so you can have a 2 plus 2 uh, core uh, two node cluster for api manager second is a volume based like uh, there is no restriction on cpu cores but there could be there would be uh, the restriction on the number of api uh, calls per month that uh, that is allowed as per the volume based license or the volume based subscription okay 
and uh, subscription based license uh, basically it is used for the cloud based offerings which is saas based uh, the products so wso2 has its corio platform which is uh, used typically used for the api management integration uh, analytics and uh, api analytics and uh, we have uh, asgardio as well which is idas basically identity as service so this is subscription based so based upon uh, the respective subscription you are allowed to use the product so i have tried to give you uh, the briefing of these license options i have however i am not going into detail if you need more detail information you can visit wso2.com/licenses it is always recommended to use the the product support for production environments if you are going to use wso2 products in your production environment so 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 for buying or purchasing a subscription makes a sense for a production environment but let's say you are just eval you are in an evaluation phase so you can request for a trial account or if you would like to use the product for let's say some duration and then you can plan for the subscription based then wso2 provides a robust community support so you don't need to worry about if you don't have a valid license wso2 has active community group where you can post your queries and you will be getting the response uh, nearly uh, in uh, as soon as possible the community response so typically it is within uh, the day you will be able to get the response so following are the community supported by wso2 as of now so we have a discord community we have collective which is a subset of uh, stack overflow and the github so for discord uh, you can visit this link to subscribe to this particular community for collectives you can visit stackoverflow.com/collectives/wso2 and for the github you can visit github.com/wso2 you can navigate to the particular repository you can post your queries and they will be happy to assist you so thank you very much and stay tuned for my upcoming uh, tutorials on wso2 api manager version 4 typically you can refer to my blog links for useful contents and the official api document api manager documentation as well and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos and hit the bell icon to get a latest notification of my upcoming videos